Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Second to None podcast. I am Blaine Gilmer here with my co-host, Tavares King. Tavares, we are here on a What's the Spread Wednesday where we're going to talk about week four. Can you believe it is already week four of the football season and SEC action is in full swing? Tavares, I mean, there's some there's some key games here that we're uh, looking forward to this week. We learned a lot last week. Now we're going to talk about what Vegas is thinking uh, heading into this week. Yeah, we get to talk about uh, a little bit, a little bit about Vegas. Uh, I think some key games this week are LSU um, at Mississippi State, Texas A&M at Arkansas, or 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 a couple, just to name a few. But man, I I think that man, it you you said it, week four. It, it's we're flying we're kind of flying through it yeah and it's it's a lot of fun and and speaking of having fun uh if you want to add a little bit extra to the to the games you know you want to it's not enough for you just to see the outcome of the game you want to feel like you got a little something on it you can always go over to bet online tk and make sure you're doing things right on there bet, bet online is the sponsor of the show here on the believe podcast network it's that time of year again and all eyes are on the gridiron as football teams are back in the swing of things guys as always bet online is your number one spot for all your pro and college football action this season get all the latest odds and props and contests everything that you could imagine including online's biggest half million dollar nfl contest the world's largest two hundred thousand dollar survivor contest open now at bet online bet online is the website that you need to go to so head on over there with your mobile device sign up today and you get a hundred percent welcome bonus on top of what you add in there bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online your online sports book expert so tk as always thankful for bet online to uh for you know presenting presenting the program here on the believe podcast network and also on the 365 sports youtube channel uh make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on notifications for all the content and not not only tk and i but the guys they go live from three to six central over there uh covering a lot of college football topics and there's just so much jd piquel there's so much stuff going on here on the 365 sports youtube channel we're also proud to partner with the sideline sports network as our social media partner at ss in underscore college football and at sidelines underscore sn uh catch all their content they come out with rankings the topical stuff they're going to be starting a website and and uh, all kinds of stuff here coming soon so thankful for all our show partners and now without a further ado tk we can talk about some of these games going on this week and some of the vegas action that is going down on them none other that we need to start with than the one that the uh, SEC is kind of deemed the game of the week, as I believe it's the CBS 330 game, and it's going to be held in Jerry's world. Uh, the alma mater of, of Jerry Jones is Arkansas, played football at Arkansas, and now they're going to be playing there in Jerry's world. And, you know, when it comes down to it, TK, you have two teams right here that are undefeated but maybe playing – a little bit different type of football right now. What's your What's your opinion? You know, Texas A and M a five and a half half point favorite in Dallas versus uh, versus Arkansas. What's your, What's kind of your thoughts on that initial line? Uh, I I'm gonna favor in 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 the sense of that it's probably a little. It's, it's probably right on. I think it'll be a good game, but. Man, just looking at the tape, there's a lot of things I like about Arkansas. There's a lot of things I like about about Sam Pittman's team, both offensively and defensively. And the first thing being K.J. Jefferson. I really think that this cat's a leader. Um, I think K.J. Jefferson's poised. I think he's um, a load when running the ball. Um, And I think he does that really well. I think he's coming into his own, and I think that he has a lot of pieces around him. that are really good. Uh, number 16, Traylon, um, number 84, Warren Thompson, uh, Davion Warren. These guys can f- flat out fly. And when it's rolling, it's, it looks really good getting the backs involved with their, with their RPO game. 
um, as well as, uh, you know, the, the read option that they run. Um, it looks really good. Um, and I think that the consistency issues that they had early on were due to some drops, obviously, from the receivers as well as just some missed throws. But when it's rolling, bro, um, looking at the tape, when it's rolling, they look good. They look really they look like a really good team when things are going good for them. Um, and that being said, they have a really good defense to back to help to help on the other side of that. So it's it's it's. I, I think that game is going to be a really interesting game uh, Saturday for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And you see right here, like I said, Texas A&M a five and a half point favorite. Um, I think that that's largely TK due to the fact of the recruiting advantage that Texas A&M has had over the last you know three or four years over in Arkansas. The accumulation of talent alone probably puts them in a position to be favored in this game. So that's partly what uh, Vegas is thinking here. Vegas also, they do their homework. Like you said, TK, they like to make money out there. So uh, they're not just throwing points around for no reason. You see Dylan Wagner and Ricky Stromberg are hurt, uh, two of the starting offensive linemen for Arkansas. And it's unclear as to whether they're either going to be able to play in this game if they're down – uh, two-fifths of their starting offensive line. These are all five starters that returned from last season for Arkansas and for Sam Pittman. And if they lose uh, two of those guys against a talented Texas A&M defense, uh, say what you want about Texas A&M's offense and the struggles. And uh, we'll throw this graphic back up on the screen here again. You see Zach Calzada, 37 of 72 50, only 51.4% on the year. So we talked about KJ Jefferson's inconsistency in the passing game. Zach Calzada's had a lot of inconsistency in the pa passing game. Um, but when you talk about Texas A&M defensively, that front, uh, they're able to get a lot of pressure on people. They play in a in not not to the same dominance level, but in a very similar fashion to a Georgia in terms of being a stifling defense, somebody that creates a lot of pressure. If you know. If you're an offense going into a game potentially with have not having two fifths of your offensive line, PK and experienced guys in that, it would kind of be hard to maybe consider yourself a of or for Vegas to consider that team a favorite with two, I guess, somewhat evenly matched teams on a neutral side. Yeah, I mean, we all know that everything starts with those big those big fellas up front and uh missing two um guys that have played in this league and have uh, major experience is, is gonna gonna play a major role in this game, I think. But I think something that can help those guys is being able to being able to run the ball with those two guys missing, being able to still do what you do, um, because I think that'll begin to open up things downfield. And um, yeah, that, that's that's something to look at for sure with those two guys being out. And, and you also see there's trends in this game. Arkansas's lost nine straight uh, to Texas A&M. I know you never look, you know, based off past uh, production for, you know, outcome of a game and stuff like that. But there is uh, – those trends can't be ignored when you got to just seem to have uh, kind of your your thumb on a, on a team, so to speak. And uh, But Texas A&M, I think what they've got to do in terms of uh, – why they're probably not a bigger favorite in this game, TK, because they do have, I think, the superior talented roster at this point because Sam Pittman's doing a good job in recruiting, but he's not been able to do what Jimbo Fisher has done to this point because he's just now get, getting – what now? So they're not there yet. Oh, no, they're not there yet, and they don't have the recruiting budget and all that kind of stuff at this point that an A&M does with that old money down there in Texas, you know. But uh, when it comes down to it, I think that you you see a one reason their favorite is because the offensive line for Texas A&M has been atrocious. I mean, they've uh, poor Zach Calzada, one reason maybe he's not as accurate as he's uh, fearing for his life. The dude's been sacked five times last week by New Mexico. If the New Mexico Lobos are are sacking you five times in a game, your offensive line's got some uh, some problems there. So you can see I put up in the right hand corner of the graphic on the 365 Sports uh, YouTube channel. The X factor for me is that pass protection. How does Zach Calzada get protected? Because uh, you know that 
that Barry Odom is going to dial up some blitzes and some things like that. So I think this is an intriguing game. I think the line is about where it needs to be simply because of the overall roster talent disparity of Texas A&M and Arkansas. But I think it also says that Vegas is acknowledging that Arkansas is playing some good football right now. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think it speaks volumes to the, the – I think it definitely praises that team and, and that coaching staff on – what they're doing over there. I, I mean, they've got my attention for sure as well. Um, I, th- I think they've got some good things happening over there. Again, um, <clears throat> those five sacks, man, last week, New Mexico State, I think Bumper Pool and that defense, J- Jalen Catalan, they might have a little bit. But they, yeah, might they, try, bring, they might try to they, one up. With them. They may bring J- Jalen Catalan, Ed Reed style, coming down safety blitz type deal. You know, uh, Greg, Greg Blue, Ed Reed. They bring it back a little bit. So they bring it back a lot of lot of stuff there. But another game, TK, our next game that I think is uh, very interesting is LSU. You and I have both uh, – we both questioned LSU as a program a little bit with uh, last week with, you know, how that they've been able to handle things in terms of an organization standpoint. It just seems that the program is in disarray and stuff like that. And to me, it's telling, even though they had a good win over what I consider still to be a good Central Michigan ball club, uh, they really handled business. It's telling that the LSU, who's only two years removed from a national championship, is just a two and a half point favorite on the road at Starkville. Uh, TK, you know, right right off the bat, LSU being a two and a half point favorite at Mississippi State. What are your thoughts on the on the line of this game, and maybe maybe why you think? Maybe uh, Vegas is is thinking that direction. Man, I uh, I like where where it's at. I think it's going to be this might be the best game of the weekend. Obviously, with that air raid offense, um, Coach Leach and and Mississippi State's they're gonna they're gonna try to put up points as well. So it'll be a fun game to watch. They're gonna ch- be chunking it around. Um, but watching the tape, man, Max Johnson, uh, he looks better. He's I feel like he's getting better every week, week in and week out. And for several reasons, obviously we know about Kayshawn Butte, but <clears throat> Deion Smith, bro, uh, cut the tape on, watch this kid today, freshman. He's emerging as a guy that is a playmaker, somebody that you want to get the ball in his hands and watch him work. Um, as and he's well going as- home. He's going home this week too. He's from Jackson, yeah. Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. He's going to go back to to his home state. So you know he'll have some. Going back to the crib, so you know he's trying to show out. You you just know it. But but the dude's a baller, not 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 just throwing the ball at him, just you want to get the ball in his hands and he can run good routes, um, as well as go up top. Uh I think he scored three touchdowns. Well, yeah, three touchdowns last week. He was balling yeah. on Central Michigan. Sorry we uh doubted you guys last week. Yeah, and uh, they, they have a they have a tight end too, TK Jack Besh that is uh you know, starting to emerge. They needed, we said that one thing they needed to do was they needed to diversify from Kayshawn Boutte. And, and, you know, Kayshawn Boutte was the one that had a, coming into the game, I think it was like well over 60% of their production on the, on the uh, receiving side. And, and, you know, Deion Smith steps up this past week, like you mentioned, Jack Besh is becoming a reliable target. And, you know, Max Johnson is going to need that. I still think um, as a, put it up here you know it's a question of they tackled better against a good running back in Lou Nichols we said that Lou Nichols for Central Michigan is a guy not to be taken uh, lightly well they held him to 18 yards rushing I think that's huge for that LSU defense probably one of the better uh, tackling performances they've had since Dave Aranda has been gone Um, so we'll see if they can make it two weeks in a row because TK you know with the style of system that Mississippi State runs they're going to be putting athletes in space. And when you're in space, it's all about that open field tackling. So LSU will either be exposed once again, or they will show that they've improved from that UCLA performance. Yeah, you know, again, Coach Coach Leach and that air raid offense is going to put those guys in positions to where they have to make plays. They have to make fundamentally sound tackles. Um, and tackling in space is hard, bro. Uh, we talked about it last uh Last episode, I've been a gunner before. I ain't if, look. I always said if I had to tackle, something bad happened. Some we, we done we done did something wrong. But no, yeah, we're t- so tackling that tackling good athletes, bro, is is hard. So I think that 
that's going to be a task for those guys because because Coach Leach has got to put them in a situation to where they have to tackle in space. And I think one reason that LSU also is a favorite on the road here, even though Starkville is a tough place to play, uh, one – like we talked about with the Texas A&M and Arkansas game, I think LSU's roster through recruiting is a, is a more talented roster. But also, um, I don't think that people trust this Mississippi State Ball Club to run the ball enough to threaten LSU because LSU, that's where they struggle is tackling in the, in the run game and defending the run game. Well, the problem is Mississippi State is averaging 55.6 rushing yards per game to start off the year. They've had like under 30-something, I think, in the last two games. And, you know, they're just not really committing to it. They throw the ball 60 – they threw the ball 67 times against Memphis. I know they're an air raid, TK, but when it comes down to it in the SEC, even in a Mike Leach system, to win games at a certain point, I think you you have to be able to run the football at least with a modicum of success. I mean, I mean, is that not correct? And based on everything you've ever seen in the SEC, yeah, hundred percent. It's 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 definitely a the, the game of football is a passing lead is a passing game. But you got to you have to, today it is, but you have to be able to run the football, bro. You got to be able to mix it up, and I think that Coach Leach. Uh, and that staff will probably do that a little bit more this game to kind of control the clock and control um, to keep keep LSU and Max Max Johnson from you know hitting them over the head hanging sixty on them. Um, I think that what or hell we might see a, a, a shootout. <laughs> yeah, you never you never know you never know. But you know Zach Arnett in that defense has got to be thinking uh, you know man we stonewalled NC State two weeks ago. We held a, an explosive Memphis team who was averaging over 600 yards a game of offense, held them to under 250 total yards of offense, and still lost that game because of special team miscue and a turnover. Um, but you would got to think that if if they're thinking, man, if we could just run the ball a little bit more and keep our defense maybe on the sideline just a little bit more, uh, it could help. So maybe some more complimentary football comes out of Mississippi State over there. Um, you know – Mississippi State, though, I will say one reason I think they're within a field goal in this game, according to Vegas, is because I think that Zach Arnett-led defense is playing well. I mean, they, they've started to to really produce and, and tighten things up. So it is an exciting matchup, TK. And speaking of exciting, we're excited here on the pod to be partnering with playactionpools.com this season to bring interactive fun to the sport that we love. You'll be able to get in on the action with our Play Action Pools football pick uh challenge, which is open to everyone. So here's how it works. Sign up uh, with the contest Believe Football pick at playactionpools.com and then get your picks in each week. We're going to be selecting the 10 highest profile games of the week between NFL and college. Whoever gets the most picks correct each week will win part of the electric sunglasses uh, will win a pair of electric sunglasses and a pair of DC shoes. Again, go to playactionpools.com, sign up for the contest, Believe, that's B-L-E-A-V, football pick them. And if you plan on hosting your own football contest at uh, the office or something like that, playactionpools.com is where you need to go. Play Action Pools, your new home for all office sports pools. They've got Survivor, they've got pick them, they've got sports book style contest build your bankroll so go over to playactionpools.com appreciate playactionpools.com for uh partnering with the second to none podcast tk we've talked about two games so far with texas a&m being a five and a half point favorite over arkansas in dallas we've talked about lsu uh taking on mississippi state those are two of the kind of the what i consider the the primary matchups here i mean you've got a Kentucky that is a five-point favorite on the road versus a South Carolina team that just got absolutely waxed in Athens last week. Um, you know, they, they were just overmatched. I, I will give it to Luke Doty. He's a playmaker, man. He he, he tried to uh, extend some plays and was able to make some good throws even on that Georgia secondary. So it that that I think them seeing what Luke Doty brings to the table – uh, and the fact that Kentucky did struggle last week with Chattanooga, maybe slept walk through that game like we talked about, I think that might be why that's a five-point game. I think 
because in reality, I view Kentucky as a team myself that if I was handicapping a game, it would be uh, probably closer to 10, 10 points or almost a two two score game. But I think maybe South Carolina getting Luke Doty back and uh, getting some rhythm to, with Josh, you know, Van and that offense. Um, and then Kentucky sh- having struggles last week. That is that kind of why you think this game's more of a five five point favorite game for Kentucky? Yeah, I'd have to say so. I'd have to say it was the sleepwalk game that Kentucky pulled last last week against Chattanooga, um, as well as uh, you know South Carolina getting their quarterback back. He did look uh, okay later in the game. Uh, I mean, as good as you can look against that Georgia off- defensive front. Yeah, yeah. He he looked okay later in the game. But, you know, um, me personally, I think Will Levis in this, in this Kentucky team, like like you said, is really good. I think, like, like we said earlier, they had a sleepwalk game, and I think they'll go into Columbia and, and wake up. Well, Lil, Will Levis went out on uh, social media after the game, said he was, you know, thankful for the win, but he he guaranteed that a different team would show up in Columbia next week. That's strong words from the the quarterback who's now, you know, just just gotten there really as a transfer and is 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 taking on that leadership role. And I think one thing that's going to really help Kentucky in this upcoming game is uh, the fact that they have a guy like Chris Rodriguez to turn around and hand the ball to, and uh, James. James Cook and Zamir White and Kenny McIntosh, a bunch of those guys had success running the ball. Uh, Georgia went for 185, I think, in that game against South Carolina on the ground, which was their greatest output of the season to date, uh, rushing the ball, I believe. So we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, there. But I think that's an accurate, pretty accurate line. Georgia's favored by, th- you know, 30 something points. I think it's 32, 34 points uh, over Vanderbilt for, so that's a bigger. Favorite bigger point spread, Tico TK, than it was against UAB. Uh, that's that's really shocking to believe that when it's an SEC team. But um, you know, probably going to be a lot of red and black up in the stands in uh, in Nashville. You know, they tend to take oh, over. It, the, it always, it always. It's a home game. Yeah, it's it's like a home game. So I think that's definitely what uh, Vegas is seeing in the in the blowout matchup up there in uh vanderbilt we're not even going to really acknowledge the alabama southern miss game i feel sorry for the southern miss golden uh golden eagles because you know nick saban's got plenty to be pissed off about after that uh florida matchup so they're going to be taking it out uh on southern miss down there uh then auburn has a uh, you know a game where they'll be heavily favored over georgia state no no big uh deal there in terms of in terms of betting but when it comes to the two games that we have left, you have Tennessee and Florida. Tennessee is going to the swamp, and they have quarterback issues. Uh, TK, you know, so when this game come comes up between Tennessee and Florida, Florida's favored by twenty points, and we'll see what ends up, uh, you know, being the ultimate outcome, and we'll give our picks on Friday. But what do you think the the reasoning is if you had to get your your line setter uh, mindset for uh, Vegas out there? Why do you think Florida is a twenty point favorite in this matchup at the Swamp? Well, I think that they're looking at how tough they played that Alabama team at home in the Swamp. Um, on our on our last episode, we talked about how fans played a big role. I think that uh, they they'll play a big role in this one too. Um, I think that that Tennessee team struggling a little bit um, versus some teams that they should have not struggled a little bit against. Uh, and I think that Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson will probably be a little bit healthier than he was last week. So I think that things will, you know, kind of work in that favor of that 20 point spread. No doubt. And and uh, you you do have to say that, you know, Tennessee in terms of, uh, stopping the run, and you know they haven't been they haven't been terrible this year. You know that's what Florida is going to try to go out and do. So maybe the fact that uh, it's a twenty point game because Florida, in my opinion, honestly, could end up winning this way by way more than twenty points just because of the the talent disparity in the in the programs right now. How successful Dan Mullen is at kind of scheming things up, and and Josh Heupel is just kind of getting that defense 
kind of right and going up there and getting the, the team itself. But another reason that, that you probably have uh, Florida as such a big favorite is Tennessee doesn't know who their quarterback is going to be be going into this you know game. You got Hendon Hooker, you got Joe Milton. That who does he go with? So we'll we'll see what happens there. Hendon Hooker's done some good things. There's been some inconsistency still. Um, Joe Milton was very inconsistent during his time before getting his injury, so he should be back and and maybe ready to go. If he is, it's going to be a decision where who knows? Maybe they play both. Uh, there's an old saying out there: if you got two quarterbacks, you don't have one at all. So you know we'll we'll see what ends up happening, TK. There, but Florida's doing the two quarterback thing yeah, successfully. This is a four quarterback game. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be so many dang quarterbacks on the field, man. You got AR fifteen and and uh, Emory Jones out there doing their things, running the option. Like uh, you know, I, it'll be interesting to me to see if the the amount of option that Florida ran against Alabama was just an adjustment for Saban, or if that's going to continue to be a uh, staple of the offense here with Dan Mullen after the success that they had. So, you know, Tennessee uh, is going to be having to prepare for a lot of different things when it comes to this Florida offense. Yeah, well, you got to think it's going to stick around. Um, if it gave them a fit, you got to think it's going to give up some other folks' fits as well. So you got to think that's something that they'll definitely have to prepare for. No doubt. Josh Heupel and company, they're banged up on the offensive line as well right now. Both Cooper and Cade Mays have been hurt at different points throughout the year. Uh, Cooper's not, you know, wasn't back for this last game versus Tennessee Tech. So we'll see at, if he's able to come back at center for them. So when you have uh, health issues at center, you got questions at quarterback, it, it kind of, we see why that line's at 20 uh, for, for Florida right now, even though. Um, you know, Tennessee, it's been four years since they beat Florida and, you know, even longer than that. I mean, I think uh, they've lost nine straight in the swamp. So this once storied rivalry has become quite lopsided. So a 20 point uh, spread there for Tennessee and Florida in favor of the Gators. And then we're going to end it up with one game that I think may be the most intriguing game to me, TK. Missouri, a Missouri team that has, you know, they only won by 10 points early in the year, Central Michigan game. They played Kentucky very tough, uh, you know, within seven points there in Lexington, which is not easy against a good Kentucky team. And now they're going on the road to a Boston College team. They're a two-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Um, I think that kind of says a lot about the job that Eli Drinkwitz has done in his second year there at Missouri, Connor Basilak. Uh, we've talked about Tyler Beatty, who took over for Larry Roundtree there, the all-time leading rusher in Missouri history. And, you know, I think with him being able to kind of step into that role and, and produce early on this year, Connor Basilak having another year under his belt, that really says a lot about this Missouri program, year two under Eli Drinkwitz and uh, why they're – a favorite, a two and a half point favorite on the road against a a good Boston College team. Yeah, I think it. I think it's huge. I think that uh, Beatty's going to have a a big game due to the fact that they don't see backs like that like him week in and week out. Um, I think that BC is a, is a good team, but I don't. I think that up front Missouri has an advantage in that aspect, and I think they got a back in the backfield that can make people miss and run through people and do some special things. So I think it's going to be a good day for Missouri. Boston College will be entering this game with a, you know, backup quarterback. They lost uh, Phil Dracovic, a very talented, experienced player for them for the rest of the season because of a hand injury um, last week. So they'll have a backup quarterback in this game. So anytime you got that kind of adjustment and uh, overall, you know, Missouri is a team that, they recruits uh, they recruit well for what they're doing. They're after uh, they're in a battle with Georgia right now for the best receiver in the country in the class of 2022. A guy named Luther Burden out of East St. Louis, Illinois. So Eli Drinkwitz trying to uh, make some noise there on the recruiting trail, bring in some talent to that to that roster, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But I think a two and a half point favorite to Missouri is uh, maybe. Maybe a little uh, aggressive in my opinion. I think this is more of a, a pick 'em type game, but I think the reason overall, uh, TK, for that, and remember, we're not picking right now. We're just listing uh, why we think Vegas is thinking the way they are. 
I think Phil Dracovic being out and also uh, the success and continuity that that uh, Tyler Beatty and Connor Bazelak have shown this year, year two under Eli Drinkwitz, that's probably why. So, you know, that's we've we've actually done it, man. We've talked about all the spreads in these games. We've talked about what's uh, coming up for the week. But this Friday, we're going to try to have some guests lined up. We're working on some things uh, for you guys. So we'll see. I, I, I'm going to definitely have – uh, Andrew Hutchinson, an Arkansas uh, beat writer that is with the Arkansas rival side. He'll be joining joining me in an interview. TK is working on something on his on his side to see. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to over promise and under deliver, so we're going to keep it under our lids for right now. But it could be a, a big guest for you here. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, guys. Throw us a like in there too on the 365 Sports YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, we we would really appreciate that. And on the Believe Podcast Network, this has been the Second to None Podcast, brought to you by Bet Online and Play Action Pools. TK, looking forward to locking in on Friday, man. All these picks, we're going di- to dive deep into these different these different game previews. Oh yeah, we're going to get it in. We're going to lock it in Friday. That's it. We'll catch you guys on Lock In Friday on the Second to None podcast.